Now, if you have a need, why don't you stretch your hand towards heaven and ask God to minister to it. Ask God to heal and bless and strengthen right now. Does anyone a witness that God is a healer in the house today? Amen. We've seen him do it over and over, and I know that he's the same yesterday, today. That's right now and forever. If you have a need, it's an opportunity for a miracle tonight. Amen. We want to remember Ralph Preston. We want to remember my father recovering from a medical procedure. We want to remember the sister Vanessa, Brother Simon, and their family with the passing of their grandmother. Brother Bruyette recovering from a stroke. Uh, God is able. I said God is able. Uh, And if you have a need in your life, would you call on the name of the Lord all over this house right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we bless you and we praise you and we thank you uh, for your power that is here. Uh, I'm asking you to bring healing to Ralph Preston right now. Uh, I'm asking you to help my father with recovery from the procedure. Uh, I pray for strength and peace for Brother Simon, uh, Sister Vanessa, and that entire family. Uh, I pray for a total and full recovery for Brother Bruette. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, I pray for Brother Hudson. God, uh, I pray that you would reach down and touch his body. Uh, bring strength and clarity and wholeness. Uh, bring strength and peace to that family right now. Uh, we give you praise and glory for it. Uh, in Jesus' name. Would you thank you for hearing our prayer tonight? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord with the praise team as they sing. Feel free to come and give your tithes and offering. We're delighted for every guest that is in the house of the Lord tonight. Give our guest a hand clap of welcome. Thank you for worshiping the Lord with us tonight. Amen. And we're delighted our evangelist is in the house of the Lord with us. Brother and Sister Muse, uh, they're going to, Brother and Sister Muse, don't you love this family? God's using them for this hour and this time. Uh, after worship, he's going to take it and preach. We're going to have a touch of God in this house tonight. Shake someone's hand. Let's worship the Lord together. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise. praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior, Yes, he is, God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer. Yes, he is, yes, he is. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, Sing hallelujah oh, to our God. Yes, glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh, every praise is to our God. 
worship in one accord. Heavy praise, heavy praise to our God. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Heavy praise, heavy praise, heavy praise, heavy praise is to our God.
close to your side so heaven is real and death is alive I want to hear voices of angels above singing as one hallelujah holy holy God almighty great I am who is worthy none beside thee God almighty great I am I want to be
There's a special touch of the Holy Ghost in this house right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. I love what I feel in this place tonight. It was just a few minutes ago. As I was upstairs fixing to come down. And I felt God begin to speak to me. And He began to tell me what all He could do for a life. And begin to think of how He could take 
the adulterous woman that was cast at his feet and turn a deadly situation into restoration. He began to show me how he can take lives, take hearts, he can transform, he can make new all over again. And as I sat there in awe and wowed in my spirit of a God moment for me that was so powerful, I felt him speak to me again. And he said, if I can do all of that with what's left, what could I do if I had everything? It's time today we don't give him what we have left, but it's time we give him everything. Come on, I'm not interested in giving him what I have left. I'm not interested in giving him the energy that I have. I'm willing to give him everything because I want to see what he can do when I withhold nothing. Come on, everybody lift your hands right now. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Come on, some of you are still holding restraint. You need to give him everything you have right now. What kind of service could we have if we didn't hold back anything? How would our worship be if we didn't hold back anything? How would our praise be? How would our response be? I'm telling somebody in the Holy Ghost right now, I know we got a message to preach, and I feel like God has something to say through this, but I'm letting you know right now, if you give your life to Him right now, there's no telling what He could do. You don't have to mess it up for Him to be great. You don't have to mess it up and be addicted to drugs and alcohol and all the things of this world. And porn. But what if you gave it to Him right now with everything you have to offer? He can clean it up, but what if he didn't have to? Uh, he can straighten it up, but what if he didn't have to? What could you be if you didn't have a mess? Uh, I rebuke the lie of the enemy that says I've got to go out there to get a testimony. The best testimony I can have uh, is to say I've never smoked dope. Uh, I've never watched pornography. I've never had drugs. Uh, I've never had... Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 1. I give high honor today to my friend, brother and sister Sansom, for all that they do for our family, their children. Even Baxter has a good spot in our heart. I love PRC, all of you good people, all the ministry that's represented here. I honor you. Good elder, I forgot your name. It's good to meet you tonight. I give you honor for the years of service and for the lives that you've impacted. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 1. Thus the heaven and the earth were finished and all the host of them. 
And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. I want to preach to you for just a little while. I tried to put a title to some of this. And I hope this one is efficient. I want to preach to you for just a little while. Recharge. Recharge. Why don't you lay your Bibles down, lift up your hands, lift up your voice all over this house right now. Why don't you entertain what we feel in this place? That's it. Lift your voice right now. I need some young people to help me in this house. Oh, have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Speak to us, God. Oh, bring every thought into captivity, God. Oh, we need your strength today, God. Oh, we need your love today, God. You may be seated in this house. It's the ingredients of a cell phone. It's your mobile phone that it has more computing power now than what was on the first space shuttle that went to the moon. The first iPhone, this is what I begin to research because Blackberries of the devil, so an apple reminds me of food because it's apple, so it's just, it works. The first iPhone came out for purchase on June the 27th of 2007. It was released on sale at approximately $4,000. The original iPhone in the United States was priced at just $499. However, this was for the, the 4GB model. For consumers in need of an upgrade to an 8 gigabyte, the price rose to $599. Fast forward to 2021, and now the starting price of a standard iPhone 12 is $799. All the young people say amen. <laughs> Mobile phones have eight. 18 times more bacteria than your toilet handle. Go figure. Mobile phones will cause headaches and confusion due to the radiation. Now we have 5G on the horizon, and they're saying it has to do with all kind of bad things. But still, the best-selling cell phone in the history of mobile devices, check this out, is the Nokia. <laughs> Some of y'all just, y'all didn't have a clue what it was like to play Snake. Y'all know what I mean? Like little bitty screen, you just, <laughs> you had to chase that thing all around. And, and then you went to text your baby, you had to text an A, B, and a C to get a C, and a D, E, and an F to get... You get coordinated enough, you could do it without looking at it. But you, ch 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 three, four, okay, five. Yeah. But it is that 1,000 cell phones are dropped in Britain every year. Brett drops mine five times a year at least. It's said that more people, now check this out, this is, this is good. More people in the world have mobile phones than they do a toilet. It's said that there are so many Facebook videos and selfies posted on social media through a cell phone, it takes up 27% of the upstream traffic of the world. Just pictures and selfies. What somebody say? If you take 10 pictures and you don't like them, you're just ugly. It ain't no. I just give up. My wife takes two or three, and I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm just ugly. I admit, I'm done. I don't care no more. That stuff's stupid anyway, y'all. Yeah. 
We're going to be spiritual in a minute. Just give me a minute. It said that an Apple iPhone will consume 25 cents. One iPhone will consume 25 cents worth of U.S. energy per year if only charged one time a day. Just iPhone. Factor in the brands of Android, Windows, tablets, and within one year alone, the U.S. would consume over 100000 in worth for energy just for devices. The technology behind iPhones require about 250,000 patents. 47% of teens say they use their smartphone to avoid having conversation with people. Or use them to avoid people in general. <laughs> Please don't do that tonight. In the year 2015, more people died taking selfies <laughs> than any other death in the country. That's when you know you. <laughs> in Japan, 90% of mobile devices are waterproof because people even use them in the showers. I don't even sing in the shower, much less talk on the phone. Like, what in the world? <laughs> but tonight, if I was to somehow raise a survey and ask every person under the sound of my voice, what is one thing you would not leave your house without? It'd be your cell phone. Because at this point in our life of 2022, your driver's license can be produced through your cell phone. Your insurance cards, your hunting license, your fishing license, your medical cards, your, all of these things can be produced. Now your vaccine card can be produced through your cell phone. Even now, Toyota, Ford, Chevrolet, all your major car retails are, are already performing data that it's no longer with a key for your vehicle, but it's strictly keyless. That when you go to buy your phone by 2025 is what they're trying to predict, that by 2025, a brand new vehicle, you won't even have a key. But yet they'll take your phone and download that software into it to where you touch a button in your phone and your vehicle runs. That's scary. But it's in that that there's nothing more aggravating than when you wake up in the morning and your phone's 100% in four hours of time, it's on 30% of battery. I watch my wife every day. It's pretty fun. It starts out 100%, and by noon, 20%. I can't talk about anybody. I'm just as bad. But, but we have the Wi-Fi on. We have the Bluetooth on. We have the Bluetooth watch connected. We, we connect it to our vehicles. We, we use it for work. It's, it's everything we do. We check our calendars on our phone. And even right now, if I was to ask some of you to check your phone and through your history, every app you've used through the day is still open. And it's draining the energy of the phone every minute that it goes by. You see, because these things and these downloads, it begins to take up memory and space. And it stops downloads from happening because we, we become so full in the modern technology that we have. That we steadily are trying to buy more. Now you have an option. You can go in and buy more data. For $5.99 a month. <laughs> Another 50 gigs. I, I remember here recently, I, my, my uncle that I grew up, Brother Brian Taylor in Jonesville, that I grew up under as a, as a young person, and grew up in the church, and now he, he's 80. He's probably watching online, so I'm in trouble, but he's 86. And he come to me here recently, not too long ago, and he wanted me to help him swap his his stuff from his written notes on his computer to his iPad. 
And I hate, at 86, you don't even need an iPad. <laughs> oh, help me, Jesus. <laughs> Elder, I'm saying that because I don't think you're 86, so I'm, I think I'm still safe, okay? I, I, but it's in these things that, that we find ourselves trying to keep up, and we overwhelm what we're trying to use. But even for our phones, we ourselves can become overloaded and drained. Everybody under the sound of my voice gets tired. Everybody I don't care who you are. You may be Superman, Spider-Man, and all the ones in combined. But at some point, you're going to get tired. And the only reason we become tired is because we're being downloaded and we're being used. You, have you ever went down the road and you said something to your wife about what you want to go shopping for? And you get on Facebook, five minutes later, there's an ad advertising that brand new lawnmower. Y'all know? It's because. <laughs> it's listening. It probably is. It probably listens to me tonight. But it's the fact that it's steadily. You download a new app on your phone, and it'll ask you things like can we track data from this? Because it's steadily trying to figure you out. And it's steadily watching your moves and it's watching where you're going. It's watching your interests. It's watching things that, that might you come into an area and things that you like. I watched it driving out here as I come through areas and, and driving on Facebook. I would get on and, and there would be an ad popped up in a certain area for something I would like. Because it's still locating where you are and trying to put things in front of you that, that may catch your attention. Can I tell you today, there is an adversary that watches your actions and your moves. He's trying to figure out what you like. He's trying to figure out what you're talking about. He, he's listening. He's, he's putting websites in front of you. Uh, he's putting places in front of you. He's putting people in front of you that will attract what you like. And if we're not careful, we become so overwhelmed. Even tonight, there could be people under the sound of my voice, myself included, that we become so overwhelmed and so full that it's hard sometimes to even feel the presence of God. Not because of sin, but because of life. We're so consumed with our job and we're so consumed with, with financial things and we're so consumed with family things and, and, so, and it's all we could do to get here. And we're, and we're trying to worship. We're trying to break through. But we're so full of everything we have downloaded. There's no room for God to fill. It's our worry over the fear of COVID. It's our worry over the fear of sickness. It's our worry over family. It's our worry over church. All of these things will fill you up to the place that you don't have any room, it seems, for God. Brother Mew has probably never preached this slow again in your life, so you enjoy slow preaching, this is your moment. But it is in these times that, that your phone will pop up to you 20%, 10%, 5%. And I notice things about my phone. If it's not for the busyness of what I'm doing, it's the fact that I'm in bad areas a lot of times where the signal's low. And 
I can't seem to get any type of reception for where I am. Can I tell you today, when you come out of that hunting trip or you come out of wherever you are and your cell phone's low, the first thing you're doing is trying to find something to connect to, to charge that thing up, because we need it on a continual basis. Can I tell you today that every one of us go through things spiritually in life that's bad reception? Every one of us go through valleys sometimes where it can't seem like we can get any reception. It says out of service. We, we don't even know where we are. But can I tell you today, when you come out of that trial, don't sit around thinking you're okay. Find a connection. Find an altar. Find a place to pray and reconnect yourself. If there ever was a time this world needs a bright light, it's now. Because when it goes to 20%, it'll ask you low power mode. When it goes to low power mode, if you notice something, your phone will dim. It's not time to be low light. 2022 needs a church and young people and brothers and sisters that are plugged in, that are charged, that are lighted. If you're dim today, I'm telling you to recharge. Reconnect to an altar. Reconnect to an altar. And recharge yourself. Because here's what happens. It don't matter. Give me my phone, please. Thank you. It don't matter what this thing can do. It don't matter how smart it is. It don't matter what all Apple has put in this thing for it to work. It don't matter how much time has been synced into this thing to, get, to give you the option to speak to it and to tell you where you are, to, to give you the option to speak to it, and you can dial 911. When it dies, it don't matter. It's dead. And when it dies, if you're not in a place with a recharging for it, You have no way to let anybody know you're dead. I know you're coming out of prayer and fast, and I see all that, and I stood in this sanctuary this evening and questioned this while I'm preaching this to you, but I'm trying to let you know today, maybe I'm preaching to somebody that still has a little light left. Maybe I'm preaching to somebody right now that still is on 10%, or maybe you're still on 20%, or maybe there's just 5%, but hear this preacher today. You need to reconnect to this place. You need to reconnect to your pastor. You need to reconnect to this church and allow yourself to recharge. But too many times we're in a hurry. How many times have you run in your house for only five or ten minutes to plug your phone up? Only to have somewhere else to be. And you run out again. Okay, I got 30%. I'm good. I'm out of the yellow. I'm out. I'm, I'm 40%. 50, I'm good for a little while longer. I'm back in the green. And you take off again. And before you know it, you're back down to 20. And you're coming back to the charging port. And you're putting it back on charging. And you're grabbing it back up. And you're going, because I've got to go. i got things to do. I've got to get somewhere. I ain't got time. And the whole time you're dying. And your phone is creating a memory. They'll tell you if you read the fine print for at least a week, charge it 12 hours every time it dies. Because it's wanting you to create a memory in this thing that it'll last for 12 hours. If 
We're steadily coming in here and charging for five minutes and ten minutes and, and praying just five minutes at the altar. And okay, I feel a little better this time. I, I think I can go again. And we get up and we run out of another service thinking we're okay. We create a memory that we're fully charged and really we're not. <laughs> I've come after you today, young person. I've come after you today, sir. I've come after you today, ma'am. Hear this preacher. Don't leave this place until you know I'm 100%. Because you don't know sometimes when you leave your house when you're coming back. You don't know sometimes the areas that you find yourself in when you disconnect from this place. You've got to be sure. You've got enough. You've got to be sure that your spirit and your soul is fully charged. There's examples of that in the New Testament. The five wise and the five foolish. You see tonight, we all look like we're, we all look 100%. We got our dress on right. We got our tie on right. We got our shoe. We got, we got everything together. We all look ready. We all look 100%. But if the trumpet sounds, would we all leave? How many people that look apostolic will be lost looking apostolic? The five foolish was not identified till it sounded because the Bible says they all trimmed their lamps. Every one of them did the same thing, but only five. Only five. The other five thought. Maybe you're here today and you're telling this preacher, preacher, I know I've got it all together. I don't know why you're preaching this. This is supposed to be revival. You're, maybe I'm trying to recharge you. Because here's the deal, and God smote me with this. The first of the year when I was praying and trying to dedicate me to get ready for this year. He smote me in my spirit. Because you see with this phone, there's such a thing as a hot spot. Brother Darren, you're supposed to be able to connect to me. But let me tell you something. When somebody else that needs help is trying to connect to you, your battery will die faster. Because you're no longer just producing signal for you. But you're producing signal for somebody that can't get no signal. We pray for revival. But are we charged of enough? Are we really charged enough? That when somebody else walks through the door, they can connect to us. that drug addict walk through the back door and pastor asked you to mentor him, would you be an effect on him or would he be an effect on you? I know this is hard stuff, but this is stuff I've questioned myself. I'm trying to minister to you. I'm not trying to shout you right now. I'm trying to give you my heart. Because here's the deal. An iPhone made for an iPhone charger. I know this is simple. Just bear with me. Brother Shea, please come help me because I've done got this thing in a knot and we're all in trouble. Oh, we got it. Thank you. Surely somebody's six a leg and help me. <laughs> They're so helpful. <laughs> God's chicken. But only an iPhone can connect to an iPhone charger. Samsung ain't going to do it, thank God. 
Samsung can't connect. It ain't designed that way. It's not created to connect to an iPhone. We're not created to connect out there. There's no way in the world I can go to a bar room and feel like I'm having a good time and feel like that Monday's going to be better. No, 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 I've got to come in here. I've got to come in here. I've got to connect to something I know will cover me. I've got to connect to something I know uh, it won't leave me. I've got to go to something I know uh, that when I come back Sunday, I can reconnect again. Uh, And when I come back in here, come on, I'm trying to help somebody today. You need to connect to the right port. Uh, You need to connect to Jesus. So lift our hands all over this place right now. You see, here's the deal. It don't matter who you are. Everybody gets weak. 1 Samuel 30 and verse number 1, I tell it to you like this. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and had smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captive uh, that were therein. And, and they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and, and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city. And behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. And David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive. Uh, And verse number six, and David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him uh, because the soul of all the people was grieved, uh, every man for his sons and for his daughters. Uh, But David encouraged himself in the Lord uh, his God. They had just come from victory. Wait a minute, David. You're the same one that killed the giant. You're the same one that said, is there not a cause? You're the same one they said that Saul slew his five thousands. And, and David, you're the same one. What, what's going on? But come on, because I, I don't care how big you are. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care what kind of cause on your life. Even giant killers get tired. Because here's what shook David to his core. He's a man of war. He's a man that can defeat the biggest giant. But when it came to his house, it drained him. Because it came home. How many people you know that when as long as it's happening somewhere else, they can fix everybody else's problems, they can help everybody else, but the minute something happens at their house, they backslide. Because we don't, I, if you can silence live feed, do it. I'm going to try to be real discreet with this. But I was sitting with a pastor not long ago in his office. And tears was rolling down his face. Uh, and he looked at me and said, I've counseled people everywhere all day. I've, I've counseled horrible situations uh, time and time and time again. But it's with my wife and with my kids. And I don't know how to fix it. Because when it's at your house, we look for avenues. And when the whole time, 
the very avenue that we encourage others to do. You need to find an altar and pray. You need to find an altar and pray. Why? Why? So many times we feel like we can go kill another giant uh, when the whole time that God's trying to tell us, uh, reconnect to an altar. Because whether you know it or not, the enemy is not just sitting by while you're doing things for God. Uh, It's steadily trying to find ways to deceive you and drain you. Whether Sansom realized it or not, every time he went to Timnath, every time he went to Delilah, there was a draining of strength. You could hear it in her voice. You could hear it in the Philistines. Tell us where his strength. Don't tell us how to kill him. Tell us where his strength is because the devil knows, uh, Samson, if he can get you weak enough. The devil can never get you weak enough. He knows I can destroy him. So you think one click on that website wasn't that bad. But... Delilah was the only honest person in that relationship. She never changed her story. Sansom's the one that lied four times. Sansom, where's your strength lie? And he lies. Sansom, where's your strength lie? And he lies. Don't deceive yourself and think you're big enough to play with things. I don't care if you have killed a lion, Sansom. I I don't care if you have tied foxes' tails together. I I don't care what if you killed him with a job. I don't care. We all can get weak. Because let me tell you something. Who God anoints in public, Satan would devour in private. You didn't see Delilah out there on the battlefield. There was too many people around. He said, what are you doing? But it was when he went in private. The biggest warriors are defeated in the most subtle moments. So you're thinking what you do. We think sometimes what we're playing with, we've got to hold on. We think sometimes what we're messing with, we're doing, and we're, and we're still connecting, but, but we're running back to it over and over and over again. We never even realize. Because the Bible says that after she shaved his head, she said, Sansom, the Philistines be upon thee. And he arose. As at other times. He didn't even know, Brother Connor. He didn't even know that God was gold. You can get used to operating so weak that when all your strength is gone, you don't even realize it. It's time today that you reconnect. You see, here's the deal. It's said that these things go through seven to ten updates a year within the first year that it is put out to stay up to date the news, to clear out bugs, to clear out spam, to give you the new features and the new things that these things can produce. But here's the catch. you got to be above 50% to start a download. Or you have to connect to a source 
to be able to download. Can I ask somebody today, how many, and I know this is very heretical, however you want to say it, how many downloads are you behind? How many times has pastor got up here and, and pushed for another download and, and pushed for another upstream and pushed for another upgrade? You can see the good, but you just don't have enough to get there. You want to download, you want to see revival, you, you want to see these things, but you just can't because you're weak. Piano player, come help me, whoever. But the Bible will tell you in Isaiah 40 and 29 and 31, he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Can I tell you today, the best point about recharging is waiting. The best part about recharging is tarrying. I'm telling you today, if you're weak in your body, if you're weak in your soul, if you're weak in your mind, you are to linger in this place. I'm trying to help somebody right now in the Holy Ghost. You've been weak long enough. You've been down long enough. You've been dim long enough. It ought to be a reconnected moment on a Wednesday night. definition of that word renew is to make like new to restore to freshness our perfection as we renew our strength and sleep uh, to make spiritually regenerate uh, to restore to existence uh, and to revive what I feel right now. Have you ever heard that saying? And from working in law enforcement, I've heard it several times, especially domestic calls with husbands and wives. One or the other at some point to tell you, it just got to where I didn't know who they was anymore. Because there was a distance in the connection. And a lot of times what drives that apart is not the fact they don't love each other, but it's the fact that they become so busy. That they forget about showing the other person affection. And they just immediately instinct that the other person knows what's going on in their life. And the whole time, the, spouse, the other spouse is telling me, saying, they don't talk to me no more. They don't spend time with me no more. They, they, it don't seem like they even love me anymore. The Bible says we are his bride. This thing ain't a boss and a son. This, this ain't an employee and a employer. No, this is a relationship. And a relationship can only be successful working both directions. He might love me. He might have died for me. But if I don't love him, it's not a healthy relationship. If I'm not faithful to him, it's not a successful relationship. If I don't stay connected, it's not a successful relationship.
Because here's what happens. In most relationships, there's children that's born out of that. In moments of intimacy. And all of a sudden, life's not focused on the two, but it's focused on the child. And even though we may love each other, we become so focused on the blessings of God. Even, even though we love God, we still, we become focused with ministry. And we become focused with church. And we become focused with all the things that we do. And the whole time we're, we're losing relationship with the one that gave us the blessing in the first place. Here's, here's where you know that this thing ends in relationship. Because the Bible would tell you in Matthew 7 and 21. You'll give that to me. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Next verse. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out many devils. They used ministry to validate. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Think about that. What, what, other, what other statement can you make? That's what we live for. Have we not prophesied in thy name? That's scripture. Have we not cast out devils? Go back. Have we not cast out devils in thy name? That's scripture. Have we not done many wonderful works? He, he said in my name you shall do greater. That's scripture. Go. Next verse. Then will I profess unto them. I never knew you. How? Can you imagine? Can you imagine that moment when you're standing there? I'm Blaine Muse. I sold my house. I got in a trailer. I did all. God, I, I gave all of that to do a work for you. And you don't even know who I am. Come on, somebody. Imagine with me. Because the great meaning of I never knew you means I do not recognize or acknowledge what you was. Because the only way you get to know somebody is through relationship. Darian, I'm not going to get to know you in one time at church. If the only time I'm trying to talk to him is on Wednesday and Sunday, that's not a healthy relationship. Can I be real blunt and plain? The charismatics can have a move of God. But a relationship when you love him when it's good you love him when it's bad you love him when ministry ain't so great and you love him when it's over the top of the mountain that's how you'll stand there and he'll say well done thy good and faithful servant because understand something a servant responds uh, no matter what the cost uh, He'll recognize you uh, when you're doing everything you can do. Uh, he'll recognize you uh, when you're at his feet every day. He'll recognize you uh, when you're connected. Yeah. 
He never called it evil works. You may say, preacher, I'm not doing nothing bad. You don't have to be doing nothing bad. Because this thing, at the end of the day, it's about relationship. Let's take sin out of the equation. When Adam and Eve blew it and messed it all up. Give me Genesis 3, verse number 1, verse number 2. This is in my note. This is not in my notes, but I feel this so strong right now. Verse number 8. 3 and verse number 8. This is after the sin. This is after. They blew it. This is after they messed up me and your life. We should, have still, be, we should still be there. After the ultimate failure that set mankind on a down spiral. The Bible says, and they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. After failure. After they disconnected. After a moment of weakness. The other party of that relationship was still walking. He was still looking to reconnect because connection is more important than your life circumstances. Let's all stand all over this place right now. I know I've been lengthy and I'm sorry, but, but I'm trying to deliver to you what God gives me right now. I want to open these altars. If you'll come, please come. But if you can, would you come? Would you reconnect to heaven today? Would you reconnect to the source that we draw our strength? Come on, I feel the love of Jesus in this house. He's walking up and down the aisles. He's in between the pews. He's looking for somebody today that'll reconnect to him. He's looking for somebody today that'll give him their all. He's looking for somebody today that'll say, God, I'm willing to download. I'm willing to linger. I'm willing to let you recharge me. <laughs> Come on today, I wish I had a prayer warrior that would lift up their voice right now. Come on, come on, come on, somebody help me pray right now. There's some people that need to reconnect in this house. It ain't about position right now. It ain't about nothing about you, but it's about reconnecting. It's not about ministry. It's not about who I am. It's not about what my name is. But it's about reconnecting to my creator. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's press a little bit. Let's press a little bit. Come on, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Come on, you can leave with a bright light today. You can leave green today. You can leave brighter than you ever have been. You weren't created to barely bleem. You wasn't created to barely show. But you was created to give light to this world. 
when you go to work tomorrow, you're the only light that'll be there. Why not let it get charged right now? Why not let it become bright right now? Oh God, would you restore relationship right now? Would you restore relationship right now? Come on, do you remember the vow you give him? Do you remember the promises you made to him? God, I'll live for you. God, I'll serve you. God, I'll stay connected. Come on, come on, come on. You need to renew it right now. Let some dedication, let some consecration come forth right now. I know what you went through was tough. I know what you faced drained your strength. I know what you faced hurt you and it caused you to become slower down. But I'm telling you today, there's a reconnection in this house. There's consecration in this house. There's a strength that can only come from above. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Let there be a renewing of the mind. Let there be a renewing of the heart. Come on, come on, come on. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. It's beautiful right now. I see hands lifted all across this house. I see tears rolling down faces. I see strength recurring. I see strength taking place right now. (laughs) When's the last time you prayed for yourself? I'm not asking you to pray for anybody else right now. I'm asking you to pray for you. (laughs) Change me. Come on, let right now become about you. Yes, yes, yes. Holy Spirit, breathe on, breathe on me. Come on, let that become a song right now. Let it become a prayer right now. Breathe on me, Jesus. Come on, everybody, sing it as we dismiss as Pastor comes. Come on, breathe on me, God.
Stop. 